Hey, welcome to another free tutorial by Photographer Overnight. Today I'm going to show you how to create a simple scrapbook page in Photoshop. I've got Photoshop CS5 open and you can use any version of Photoshop, it should be the same. So we're going to do File, New, and if you like to do like a 10 by 10 or a 12 by 12, you'll just type that in here. I'm going to do 12 inches by 12 inches and then 300 pixels per inch is a great resolution. Background, I'm just gonna do white, and then hit OK. And now you've created your scrapbook page. So now we can start dragging elements onto the page to make it look how we want. Now one of the best places that I like to go for elements, or just any scrapbook pages and things like that, is digiscrapdepot.com. And this is a great site to download freebies from any scrapbooking site. They kind of go out and collect all the freebies from all different scrapbooking sites. And they put them together for you so you can just do a search for any theme you want. If you're going to do like a Valentine's page or an Easter page. You just search at the top and then it's got all different free scrapbooking pages and embellishments that you can just download and then use to create your page in Photoshop. So once you've got your scrapbooking pages and different elements that you want to add, you'll come and drag them into Photoshop. So here's one of the pages that I want to use. Just a cute paper that I downloaded for free. And if you're using CS5, you're going to get this transformation box immediately after you drag in your layer. So you just hit enter um, unless you want to transform it. In older versions of Photoshop, you will just be able to drag it in without the transformation box. Um, I'll show you how to transform your layers and images in a minute. So I'm just going to drag this over here, and then I'm going to come over here and grab another paper, and then hit enter to commit this transformation here, make sure it fits. And then I'm going to drag the pink layer underneath, so we can still see the yellow layer on top. And now I'm going to create some boxes to put my pictures on. So we're going to grab the square selection tool here and just click and drag to make your box any size you want it. And what we're going to do is create a new layer by clicking this icon here. And then Shift F5 will bring up your fill box. If you have a Mac, I'm not sure what the hotkey is, you can just go to Edit, Fill, and then that will bring up your fill box. So we're just going to fill it in with the foreground color, which is white, hit OK and then control D to deselect. So now we have this layer here with our box. I'm going to have to drag it up here so I can see it because it was hiding underneath the yellow paper there. And then hit the arrow tool and we'll be able to drag around this box anywhere we want it. But I'm going to leave it here. And then I want to duplicate this box so I can have another one exactly the same size. So just hold down Alt and drag and you'll have another box. Then hold down Alt again and I've got three boxes here. So now we've created a clipping mask to crop our pictures to. Now this is one of the best kept secrets that you'll learn for cropping a picture. So now I can just grab any picture that I want to use and drag it into Photoshop. Again in CS5 you'll see this transformation box right away. If you're using an older version of, C of Photoshop, just hit Control T and you'll be able to transform this box. Hold down Shift and we'll be able to make it bigger or smaller. Now the reason I'm holding down shift is because it keeps the proportions of my picture the same. Uh, if we don't hold down shift, we'll be distorting the picture, as you can see. So that's why I always hold down shift. Control Z will undo anything that you just did. So hold down shift, transform it to the size you want it, and then we're going to bring it above the box that I want to clip it to, and then Always hit enter after you've transformed a picture to commit the transformation and get that box to go away. So now we've got to make sure that my picture is above the layer that I'm going to clip it to. So here's the white box on layer one and then hit alt, click between these two and you can see my picture above is being clipped to the box underneath. With the arrow tool selected, you'll be able to move your picture around inside the box and then control T will be able to make the picture smaller so it'll fit a little better and then enter to commit the transformation. 
Then I'm going to grab another picture over here and we'll do the same thing. So you just drag the corners to transform it. And always remember to hit enter or you won't be able to do anything with that box still on it. And make sure to bring your picture above the box that we're clipping it to. Hold down alt, click in between the two layers and you've cropped your picture. And then you can still adjust the size after it's been cropped to your box. And then we'll grab our third picture here and do the same thing. Bring it above the box, hold down Alt, clips it to the box. Okay, now we're going to add just a little border around the boxes to make it a little more exciting. And to do that, we're going to use the same fill method. Just get the selection tool. Create a box, click new layer down here, and then we'll fill it in. Shift F5 or edit fill. Hit OK. And then Control D will deselect it. Now it's putting my box on top of my picture, so you have to come over to the layers and drag it underneath your picture, which was all the way down at the bottom here. And then you can still adjust the size of the box afterward. Control T will let you transform the box. I've zoomed in by hitting Control plus. And then Control zero will zoom us back out again or control minus will zoom you out a little at a time. And then with the arrow tool selected, I'll be able to duplicate this white box here by holding down Alt and dragging. And there's another one. Then Alt and drag again. And we have a third box. Now I'm going to show you how to make some font out here to the side. I'm going to do some little buttons on circles here. So I'm getting this circle selection tool. And then hold down Shift to make it a perfect circle. I'm going to create a new layer again. Shift F5 will fill it in using the foreground color white. Hit OK. Then Control D will deselect. So now I have this little circle and I want to make a little border around it using pink. So we're going to get the eyedropper tool and just select the pink that we want. And then click, double click on this layer here. It'll bring up this layer style box. And I'm going to come down to Stroke, and then change the color from black to this pink we've chosen. Then hit OK. And I'm going to bring the size up to 8 pixels and hit OK. Now I'm going to put some font on the button by using the text tool here. And then you can change your font with the drop down menu. I'm going to grab Felix Titling. And then you can change the size here. I'm just holding down the up key. And then always use the arrow tool to move around your font once you're done. So we've got a T and we've got a circle here. And you can tell where your circle is if you hit this eyeball tool, we'll see the circle disappear. I'm also going to add a drop shadow to this circle. Um, by double clicking, you'll see the layer style box again. I'm going to click drop shadow. You can't really see it on this one. So let's make the spread a little bigger and the size a little bigger. And hit OK. Now I want to duplicate this button. So what we're going to do is select the T and the circle. By holding down the control key, we can select as many layers as we want. So we have the two layers selected. Now I'm going to hold down Alt and drag so I can duplicate this layer. And I'm going to hold down Alt and drag to duplicate it a couple times. And then to move these last three layers, just find where they are over here and hold down Shift and you can select all of these at once. And I'm just going to move these over so they're lined up a little better. And then you can change the font on any of these just by clicking the text tool here. And then always click the arrow tool to get off of your text or you won't be able to do anything else. Then click the text tool again. And you can change all of these letters individually. And I'm going to nudge this over by hitting the arrow key. 
And if you're not sure which layer you're moving, if you're moving this layer and you're trying to move a different one, just come over here and select the layer you want to move. Make sure your arrow tool is selected, and then you can move it anywhere you want. So I'm just going to quickly change all of these. So there we have our first page, and if you're doing a two-page spread, it's really easy to just duplicate this page here by saving it as two different pages. So um, shift Control s or you can just go File, Save, As. We'll save this with one name and hit Save. And I always save it as a PSD first, so if I need to make changes, I can always go back and change them. Whereas if you save it as a JPEG, it flattens everything and you won't be able to change anything. So you can see it says Test Scrapbook 1 here. And I'm going to go File, Save As again, and then save this as Test Scrapbook 2. So now it says Test Scrapbook 2, but if you go File, Open Recent, and then reopen the test scrapbook one, then you've got two pages here. Well, control minus, we'll zoom out so we can see. Then you'll be able to work on a two page spread so you can see how they look together. So for my second page, I'm gonna switch it up a little. I'm gonna come down to this layer with the yellow and the pink circles and delete that. And instead, I'm gonna bring over this yellow paper and bring it up here, hit enter to commit that transformation. Then I'm going to hold down alt so I can create a duplicate copy of that paper and bring it down to the bottom. Now I'm going to get rid of all of the font here. Sometimes the hard part about digital scrapbooking is finding those layers that you're trying to work with. So I know that this is the circle and this is the T. So I'm starting down here and coming all the way up here to the S, hold down shift, and then hit delete, and that gets rid of all of my buttons. And then I'm going to also get rid of these pictures here. So we're starting at layer 2, coming up to here, hold down shift, and then I'm just going to hit delete, and all those layers are gone. Now if you ever make a mistake that you need to go back to, that's the great thing about having this history open. You can open up the history by going to your window and then just click history here. I also have layers open right here. And that's where you can see all of these. So I'm gonna create some new boxes for the second page. Get the selection tool. I'm right clicking to see the circle and the square and other options. And so I'm gonna come over here and just create another box. Click new layer. Now before I fill it in, I'm going to look over here and my colors are pink and black. To get back the default of black and white, just click D and that'll switch for you. And then you can switch between the two right here. So I'm going to hit Shift F5, fill it in with white, Control D to deselect it. And make sure your arrow tool is selected. And I'm just going to hold down Alt and copy this box over here. Then hold down Alt to copy the box again, but I'm going to Control T to transform this box. And then if you hold down Shift, you'll be able to transform it and rotate it in perfect increments um, rather than having a slightly crooked box. So I held down Shift and I rotated it vertically and then hit Enter to commit the transformation. Now I'm going to hold down Alt and duplicate this layer and bring it up here. So this is kind of a different layout you can use. And then I'm going to drag my pictures in and clip them onto those layers. Okay, now that we have those done, I'm going to create a border around the picture. I'm going to show you a different way to create a border. What you're going to do is click on the mask underneath your picture, the white box, double click it, and you'll see the layer style box. And I showed you how we can do a stroke. We're going to change the color to white and hit OK. Now you can see a tiny little stroke around this box. 
Now I don't really use this one as often because you can see the bigger that you get, the more rounded your edges are on the stroke. So it creates kind of a rounded border. So it gives you a little variety. You can have a rounded or a straight edge. And then just hit OK. And that's how you can create a border around your picture by changing the style of the white box underneath. Or you can use the other method. Click on the selection tool. And then I just eyeball it. Click new layer. And I'm going to show you something that's going to happen right here, which gets confusing. Hit Shift F5 to fill it in and then deselect it. Now you can see I can't see anything. It looks like I didn't do anything. We're going to hit the arrow tool. What's happening is my picture is now getting clipped to this box on the left, but you can see the picture is actually the picture on the right, which is supposed to be getting clipped to this layer one right here. So this layer is just kind of in the way. So I'm going to drag it up here and get it out of the way. And then you can see this little arrow here means that it's being clipped to this picture. Uh, so we don't want this box to be clipped to the picture because we can't see it, obviously. We're going to hold down Alt, click in between. That will unclip the box to your picture. And then we can see our layer here. So if you ever have a layer that seems to have gone missing or is hiding somewhere, check to see if it's being clipped to something else or if it's just hidden underneath, and you can just click on it and drag it up above. So I'm going to hold down Alt and duplicate this box. Now remember to transform it, make it horizontal to rotate it. We're just going to hit Control T, and then up here you see the rotating arms. Hold down Shift, and then we rotate it. Hit Enter. Now this actually needs to go underneath that other picture, so I'm going to drag it underneath. And then you can just make little changes in the position by hitting the arrow keys on your keyboard. That helps you to get it into place more accurately. Then hold down Alt, and I've created another one. Control T, and then here's the rotating arms. Holding down Shift so it rotates perfectly and not at some crazy angle. Then hit Enter and then I'm nudging it over with the keyboard. The last thing I'm going to do is just add a little flower for an embellishment. So we've got this flower that came with the kit, and I'm going to make it a little smaller. So I'm going to bring the flower above the picture so we can see it. So there is a great two-page spread, and then you'll want to just save both of these as a JPEG, a format right here. That way you'll be able to upload it to any online printer and use it in a photo book. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And come see more at photographerovernight.com.